God has our people in a decayed, a lower state today. Right. Why? Because our people are breaking God's laws, statutes, and commandments. The point of our people being at a bus stop, strung out on drugs, right. homeless, right. hungry, jobless, is for them to seek God's face. When you're in a classroom, you went to school before, right, Kevin? When you go to school, Graduate. when you go to school, who does all the talking in class? The teacher. The teacher, right? Does the student say, hey, teacher, I got my opinion on how this math does to go, right? But why when your brother comes up here and tries to teach you something, you feel like he has to listen to you? what I did. Listen to the teacher. No, you I said did. he's not I listening to you. Get a good yes, he's fine. Here's what you must do. What you got to understand, uh, Kevin, is that we out here showing love to our people. We love our people, right? But we out here to teach our people their transgression. Get Ecclesiastes 5 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Here's what you must do, Kevin, when you're in a, a classroom setting. Because this is class right here. We're teaching our people the Bible so that they can learn to repent, learn to love themselves in order to love their people. Read that. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. So it tells you keep your foot when you go into the house of God, Kevin. Meaning... Keep your mouth shut when you have brothers out here that's studying out here to teach the Bible. Read. Read. And be more ready to hear. Let me ask you a question. When you went to school, did you ask the teacher, oh, I got to hear your lesson, teacher, about Julius Caesar and the Roman Empire? I'm all here. I learned the hard But the problem is you see your brothers that look just like you, and now you don't want to learn from us. I do. Read that again. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. So Kevin is telling you to keep your foot when you go into the house of God. Read. And be more ready to hear. It says, and be more ready to do what? To hear. To hear than do what? Then to give the sacrifice of fools. Then to give a sacrifice of fools. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is when you have brothers up here teaching the Bible, and you come up here and you want to say that God loves the whole world. And to say that you being married to another nation is a good thing, and to say that your enemy is your brother because our own people destroy us, that shows, Kevin, that you are actually destroyed as yourself, bro. Right. right. And that you need to learn the word of God. Read that again from the top. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. So it tells you to keep your foot, meaning be quiet. Read. And be more ready to hear. Be more ready to hear, Kevin, than to do what? Than to give the sacrifice of fools. Than to give the sacrifice of fools. Read on. For they consider not that they do evil. Because you don't consider that what you're doing is evil. Now, the whole deal is... The problem with our people now, and the reason why you said that that white woman, she pulled you off the street while your other brothers stepped all over you, right? Brother. And you see what's going on across the street right there? Sure our brothers are giving out, they're How giving out sandwiches to our people, right? How many people used to stand here? We see you out here. I'm out here. But guess what? We're saying. not out here to but deal with the masses of the people. Give me Matthew 4, verse 4. Let me show you blessings. something. Let me show you something. Hmm. I'm giving blessings, bro. Matthew, I've been some four. years old. I've been there. Brother, you I've need a blessing. I've been holy. Let me give you blessings. Hold that. Give been. Revelation. Yeah, give five, Revelation. Seven, Bless man. the day. Revelation, chapter 1, verse 3. Read. Blessed is he that readeth. It says, blessed is he that readeth, Kevin, read. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. And that hear the word of prophecy. So you say you're blessing us. You're hearing the word of prophecy. Well, you're being blessed right now. Read. Because you know what? Young, and keep young, those things which are like written that. therein. So your job is to keep the things that are written therein. But the problem with our people today is this. Get Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Bring it out. Here's the problem with our people. It's definitely a problem. Ecclesiastes yeah, chapter 7 and verse 7. Read. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. It says surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Kevin, you're oppressed. 
just like all of our other people out here are oppressed. The people are over there now giving out food to the oppressed people. Right. Because they understand that we're in a lower state today. And that our people are hungry. And that our people are homeless. And that our people need some type of refuge, right? But here's the issue. Read. And a gift. But a what? A gift. A what? Gift. A gift. Does what? Destroy at the heart. Our people don't understand that the Most High God has us in this position today. The people across the street don't understand that God has our people in a decayed, a lower state today. Right. Why? Because our people are breaking God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. Get Hosea 5 verse 15. It's fine. You may think that they're doing well by giving out food, right? Because you feel like you're doing the right thing to our people that are living in poverty situations. But what you must understand is that God has us in these situations. If you understand that, then you understand that you're actually interfering with God's program by giving a gift to the people that are suffering out here. Right. That are being oppressed out here. Right. That are destroyed out here. Right. Read. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. What? This is the most High God's program. Read. I will go and return to my place. The most High God said he's going to go and return to his place, meaning he is not going to deal with his people. He is going to make sure that his people are defenseless in this disgusting, sure decrepit God society. Read. Sure Till they acknowledge their offense Read. and seek are my face. And God's seek God's face. Read. In their affliction. In their what? Affliction. In their poverty. Read. They will seek me early. The point of our people being at a bus stop, strung out on drugs, Bert. homeless, Bert. hungry, all jobless, is for, the, for them to seek God's face. Read that again in their affliction. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face uh -huh. in their affliction. In their affliction, what are they going to do? They will seek me early. They're supposed to be afflicted in order to seek God. So the word of God is coming out. That's why we're out here now handing out flyers. We're trying to teach our people who they are according to the Bible, not get a damn sandwich or some food so that you can remain in your estate. Right. Understand it? Get Matthew 4, verse 4. Bring it out. Bring it out. Get Matthew 4, verse 4. A plate of food is not going to help our people get out of the condition that we're in. Right. We must understand that. Read. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Bring it out. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone, read. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceeded out of that Bible is how our people should live. Now the problem with our people is we rather take that gift that makes us feel as if the other nations and the Christian church and the Muslim mosque and all them other places love us. Get some rock chapter 12. Bring it, Bring it out. It's the Rock chapter 12, because what, what's happening is you're interfering with the Most High's program in regards to our people repenting. The job is for you to be afflicted to the point where you want to see God's face. Read that. 12 verse 1. So Rock chapter 12 verse 1. Go ahead. When thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest it. So you come out and you want to feed the homeless. God says when you do good, what? Know to whom thou doest you're it. You're supposed to know who you're doing good to. Right. You better know who you're giving that food to. Right. You better know who you're nourishing. Right. Because you may be nourishing the next person that may rape your daughter. Right. right. You may be nourishing the next drug addict or the next crackhead that may damn rob you. Right. Right. Be mindful of who you're nourishing. Read right. that again from the top. When thou will do good. Know to whom thou doest. You must know to whom you are doing good to read. So shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits. So that you can get thanks for your benefits. Read. Do good to the godly man. The most High God says what? Do good to the godly man. You are supposed to do good to the godly man. Yeah. You're not supposed to nourish a damn drug dealer that's going to sell poison in your community so that he can kill your nation and right. kill your people. Read. And thou shalt find a recompense. Then you're going to find a recompense. Read. And if not from him, read. yet from the Most High. When you do good, you'll get recompense from the Most High. Read. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil. That's the problem. No good can come to him that's always occupied in evil. Right. right. 
So you got a brother out here on this corner right here that may have just raped some sister yesterday, last night. And he's hungry now. And you want to do good to the people, so you go and feed that brother that's hungry. Instead of letting that brother get to the point of death or damn near dying of hunger so that he can seek God. So you nourish that rapist. And what happens? Now he's strong and emboldened. And guess what he's about to do again? Go and rape somebody else tomorrow. Read. Nor to him that giveth no alms. Read. Give to the godly man. He says give to the godly man. Read. And help not a sinner. Do what? Help not a sinner. It says don't help a sinner. So now what is sin? So that Bring we can edify the people here. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Hey, sis, how you doing? Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. What's your name, sis? Miss Rosa. Miss Rosa, let me ask you a question. Do you think giving out food to the homeless is a good thing? <laughs> Come here, let's dialogue for a second, Miss Rosa. You got, you got five minutes. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Do you think giving out food to the homeless is a good thing? Mm -hmm. Why? Come here, sis, come on, yeah, man. Let's dialogue just for a second. I know you got some place oh. to be. What you got? Uh, you think it's good? Yeah. Why? Because it's something charitable, right? You think you're doing good to people, right? Yeah. Well, why does God say this? Read that again. Give to the God. Verse 4. Read. Give to the godly man and help not a sinner. Why does the Bible say that? My dad did after 27 years. Why does the Bible say give to the godly man and help not a sinner? Jehovah Witnesses, everybody. I treat why do you every think? man like a man. You show me different. Huh? I respect you. Okay, okay. But let me let me show you something. God says help oh, not a sinner. Read on. Let me show you this. Read. Do well unto him that is lowly. It says do well unto him that you know that fears God that is lowly. Read. But give not to the ungodly. But it says don't give to an ungodly person, right? You know why? Read. Hold back thy bread. It says hold back your bread. Do not give your food. Read. And give it not unto him. It says don't give to an ungodly. Why? Read. Lest he overmaster thee. Lest he do what? Overmaster thee. That overmaster goes into that brother that's ungodly. There's nothing but ungodly brothers and sisters out here that need the Bible. They need God's laws. Right. They're living a life of rape. They're living a life of murder. They're living a life of drug abuse, drug addiction, drug dealing, gang banging, all those different things. And when you nourish that person, and when you feed that ungodly person, what are you doing for them? You're allowing them to go back and live that same life. You get overmastered thereby read. For else thou shalt receive twice as much evil. You, go ahead. For all the good thou shalt have done unto him. You know what that twice as much evil is? You hand out food to the homeless because you're all right. You, you got food in your house. You have it to give. You live in a decent place, a decent house, right? That brother that's down and low. You feed him. You nourish him. That'd be that same brother that kicks in your door, breaks into your house, and robs you of everything you got. May kill you. That same person that you actually gave a piece of bread to. Because they're not trying to repent. All they do, they, they come out here drunk, they come out here on drugs, and instead of telling them, hey bro, change your lifestyle, it's, let me give you a sandwich to make myself feel good. Right. Right. Don't let me tell you what you need to hear to change your life so that you can maybe be in my situation though. Read. For the most high hated sinners. Because God hates people that lives an ungodly life. You understand that? God hates. And he hates sinners. So our job is to teach our people what sin is, the sin that we're in, so that we can repent and stop doing those things that God hates. You understand, right. sis? So let me ask you a question, sis. I know that you say you can't speak much. But what is sin? 
What a sin. You don't know? That's a great answer. The problem with our people is they walk around here acting like they know the Bible and they act like they know. Right. So you say you don't know. Give me sin. First John chapter 3 verse 4. Look it up. We're going to get you what sin is real quick. Go ahead. Whosoever committed sin. It says whosoever committed sin does what? Transgresseth also the law. They break God's laws. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is when you break God's laws. You understand that? So when you go back now to Sirach, when he says the Lord hated sin. So when it says the most I hated sinners, read. Sirach chapter 12 verse 6. For the most high hated sinners. Why do you think it says God hates sinners? Because they're doing the things that God hates and they're not doing what God wants them to do. Right. They're not walking as a person that God... Let me ask you a question. You have children? All right. If your child, you raise up a child, he's in your house, he or she's in your house. They end up stealing from you. They, they abuse you. There's, there's cases where children beat their parents. They, they call the cops on you, make you get arrested. Are you going to love that? Are you going to like them? You're not. That's just natural, right? So when we go against God, when we break his Sabbath day, when we, when we break all his laws and say, act like the Most High is good with that, why do you think God says he hates that? Because he wants you to repent and change. Go back to Hosea 5 verse 15. Our people are in a low estate today. Why? Because they break God's laws. And the Most High has a program for every single one of us. Read. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Read. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. So our job is not to appease the people that are breaking God's laws. Our job is to make sure that they understand that we have offended the Most High God. Right. We're living an ungodly lifestyle and that's why the Most High God is not defending us now. Read. Right. And seek my face. And they start seeking how to serve God. Seeking God's face is not just opening your Bible, going into the Christian church and saying, oh, I love God, and that's it. You seek God's face, meaning what does God require of me? Read. In their affliction. In their what? Affliction. Go ahead. They will seek me early. So our people are being afflicted, shot down by the enemy, as well as our own people. Our sisters hate themselves. Our brothers hate themselves and hate each other. Bert. The brother just walked past, said that he deals with a, with a so-called white woman, right? And he says that his biggest enemy it's his brothers that's next to him because they're the ones that break into his house, do those things to him, right? Why wouldn't your biggest enemy be the people that did this to your people? You know. And have you in a poverty situation? Why wouldn't your enemy be the people that actually raped your foremothers? Your great, 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 great grandmother raped her or murdered her or murdered your, your forefathers. Why wouldn't those be your real enemies? Okay, you got brothers that you're against. Okay, I understand that because they don't know no better either. But our job is to make sure that we edify our people, you understand? And show them what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to be. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.